Hey everyone, Tim once again with the Word of Life Church. Our address is 3342 Midway Street, Knoxville, Tennessee, 37921. That is the Word of Life Church. Our pastor is Junior Mount and always on behalf of our pastor, the, uh, the congregation and uh, myself, I'd like to give you an open hand uh, and an invitation to come out and be with us for service. Uh, don't I'm not trying to take you away from your church, you know. I believe, believe that you know you belong to church, and that's where the Lord's put you. Then that's where you stay until He loses you from that and sends you somewhere else. Uh, but we always send out an invite because we love to have people visit, especially if if you have church on a different night than our service times. You know, by all means, come out and visit. Uh, our service times are as follows. You guys know this. Listen to me all that. But uh, have a Sunday school at 10 a.m worship service at 11 a.m. then we come back at 6 p.m. for our evening service <clears throat> excuse me and we have our midweek service uh, Wednesday night at 7 p.m. so if you're able and don't have service uh, on those times I know people have different service times Tuesday Thursday some I've even heard some churches even have it on uh, Saturdays so uh, at any rate if you're able to and can uh, come out and visit with us we'd love to have you love to worship with you uh not trying to pull you like i said from your church we believe that you need to be where god places you uh to work now if you're you know if you're an evangelist or something like that and you travel around then you're kind of expected and you know that's sometimes you're not going to be there you're going to be visiting other churches and ministering and uh you know uh doing what god wants you to do so before we go any further, let me go ahead and uh, have you turn to, we're going to be in the book of 2 Timothy, and we're going to start at chapter 1 and verse 1. i uh, like to uh, ask y'all to remember my father-in-law in prayer, uh, just uh, I heard from my wife earlier uh, via text, and I asked her how she was, or how, her, you know, how she doing, how her father was doing, and uh said that uh, they're keeping him they're gonna move him to a room taking him out of ICU and they're putting him in a room uh, and I know he's he's ready to come home uh, because he's he's one of those that he does not like to sit still and I can't say I blame him I, I wouldn't want to be uh, you know but you know tied down but he's not literally being tied down but you know what I'm saying <laughs> being kept in a uh, hospital bed I want to be up and be able to do stuff and move around uh, but uh, he's it's, he's healing he's just very sore had a blockage so just remember that and uh, he does have other blockages so remember that in prayer that after this heals and everything's okay with that they will find these other ones and deal with those as well and he'll be okay uh, you know he'll heal and be able to function a lot better uh, but we thank the Lord that they, you know, the, the Lord gave them wisdom and knowledge, medically speaking, to find these and be able to take care of them. Um, you know, I know God can heal. I firmly believe that. But you know, you've got to, you've got to believe that as well and pray that. And we, uh, we, but we pray that that he'll that he'll be healed and he'll come home uh, as soon as possible. But. You know, if he has to stay there for a little bit to make sure there are no complications, as I was telling my wife earlier, then it's better than coming home and then having to go right back again just because something happens. So, uh, but just remember him in prayer. Uh, let's remember all the brothers and sisters in Christ here and abroad, uh, overseas, that are, uh, you know, dying for the faith. Uh, pray for the ones that are, you know, the course that are alive maybe on the run or you know secretly meeting and having church uh <laughs> like they did when christianity first started to spread and you know it did it really does when you when you say this and it's very true that christianity was spread around the world by the, the by the blood of the uh believers uh you know, upon the back you know th you know thrown you know, burned alive, uh, thrown into lion's dens. You know, it's just horrible. But you know what? They, they, they did it. 
wholeheartedly because they knew they knew they they were saved they knew the Savior they knew the Lord Jesus Christ maybe after their time may have been a time when you know after the Lord had ascended and maybe some of the people that were around there in that time had passed on many years later look at us right now 2,000 years later and we're still here and we'll still occupy until the Lord comes or he calls us home you know some of us you know who knows uh, it's in God's hands our time our time of departure is in God's hands um, you know it, it sometimes it can be by accident sometimes he can just he can call your number hey, you know as I've said before I said it in service Sunday you know I think a couple times even once in the morning once in the evening service uh, you know who knows five minutes from now I could I could I, myself could have a massive heart attack or something and you know be gone be out of this world but thank the Lord I know where my eternity is going to be because I believed on the only begotten Son of God the Lord Jesus Christ and he saved me because I asked him to I asked him to forgive me for my sins for my transgressions and cast them away, you know, forgiven, cast them away into the, you know, as far as the east, you know, and that sea of forgetfulness that was one of those older songs talks about, and to save me, and to walk in his will. Well, therefore, you know, he has, and I have to do the work that he's put me to, uh, which is several different types of ministries, but, uh, you know, they all kind of work in concert together, uh, it's uh, different times for different things. One time you may minister a certain way, and the next time, in a, you know, like the last couple of messages, I think some of that rod of correction has had has was brought out. <laughs> uh, sometimes you have to do that. Sometimes pastors have to do that. You know, if something is you know not right, if the enemy is trying to you know barely stick his hand in the door get his foot in the door well you know what he shows you a toe or even a finger that's in the door kick the door closed and chop him off or blow him off do whatever you can keep him out of there we have power over him I just reminded him of that a few minutes ago when I rebuked him in the name of Jesus he said well brother why'd you, why'd you that's kind of why'd you do that because he was trying to everything he can as he normally does to try to stop me from doing a video all kinds of distractions and all kinds of stuff going on you know before you know dealing with you know our pets and you know just uh, whatever it may be you know everything is fine and good when I'm just sitting here and I'm not doing anything if I'm watching TV or if I'm you know doing some reading other maybe other than a biblical study or my Bible or something like that oh everything's just calm peaceful everything but once start getting into God's word and start getting on the video it's when chaos erupts you know what but rebuke him and guess what we're moving on not stopping because of him he's nothing he is nothing we've got power over him according to the Lord Jesus we've got power over all the principalities and the powers and the rulers of darkness of the world and the spiritual wickedness in high places got power over the serpents and the scorpions and all the power of the enemy not in ourselves it's only through the Lord Jesus being saved being filled with the Holy Ghost you got power over him so use it if he comes at you if he comes at you full force you run at him full force boom like that do like David did to Goliath run out to meet him don't be scared of him Put your rock in that sling, twirl it around, and just let it fly. Boom. Right in the forehead. That's what we need to do. Amen? Uh, <laughs> I guess I sound aggravated. So I'm, mad. I'm mad at the enemy. Of course, I stay mad at the enemy because of all the stuff that he does and all the lives that he takes and, you know, the, just the evil that he brings upon. And not just him. It's not just him. The, we've got to deal with fallen angelic beings, the fallen angels, the fallen ones, demonic spirits, unclean spirits, seducing spirits, spirits, um, many of whatever sin that there may be. But we can deal with it. We have the power. The Lord gave us that power. So we need to stand up and exercise that power. Okay, spiritual warriors, 
You got to exercise that power. Get in God's Word. Gain as much wisdom and knowledge as you can through His Word and understanding. That's how you gain all this power. You gain through the wisdom and understanding. It's through His power. Not anything that you can do. You know, I can't. You know, the, can't uh, make the devil appear and me give him a good hit to the face. Although I would like to sometimes. Can't do that. It's by the word, through the word, and through the spiritual warfare that we that we have to deal with. And pray. A hedge of protection about your family, your loved ones, your friends. I, 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 I'm just I'm putting my experiences to you right now. Do that, and how to do that, and what to do. When you take on the enemy in the spiritual warfare sense, pray for a hedge of protection about your family and your friends, your loved ones, and your church, your church members. Because he's going to come at you full force. That's why I said you go with him full force as well. Amen. Mm. Mm. Gets 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 me stirred up. Gets gets those uh, those uh, spiritual boxing gloves on and to get ready to get ready to knock him in the jaw. <laughs> anyway, Second Timothy chapter one and verse one. Uh, but we love the Lord and appreciate all he does and thankful that he gives us victory over the enemy. Uh, it said, don't be afraid of him. Don't be afraid of him. He's not got power over you. It says in verse 1, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, according to the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus. And <laughs> like I said, it's, today, it's, it's not, like I said, not funny. But that shows you how God works you know Paul going about persecuting the Christians and the church and you know the Lord meeting him and arresting him basically as I like to put it on the road to Damascus and did a complete turnaround and now he was going to have to experience the the uh, the wrath of the Jewish leaders at the time and the people that and the pagans and everybody that was coming against him he was going to have to experience he went from putting people in the prison to actually himself being in prison and you know he wrote a lot of the New Testament while he was in captivity he wrote it to the churches and sent it out so here we have in the second letter to Timothy opening it up saying that you know he's making it very clear that he is an apostle of Jesus Christ and it was by the will of God we are apostles, we're disciples, we're believers in Jesus Christ by the will of God. He called you one day to an altar of repentance. Where that altar of repentance may have been. May have been at your church. You know, may have been at home, maybe wherever. And as I said this thing, I said this yesterday when I was preaching at church Sunday. I actually even mentioned it twice again just, just because I was trying to hammer a point and I mentioned once in the morning in service and mentioned it in the evening service uh, and and while I'm, while I'm on that thinking about that church I was preaching at New Fellowship Church remember them in prayer God knows all about it just lift them up in prayer okay that's all I'm going to say just ask that the Lord will bless them amen but anyway, it mentioned, I said, you know, when you go in places, especially when you're an evangelist, when you you look around, you, you know, watch stuff, you know, watch people, and, you know, you just get in the field of the place and look and see stuff. You know, some people have different stuff, like, you know, photos up or, you know, and they, they had some photos up of different stuff, people and, you know, past, you know, church members and stuff like that. And just other things around, you know, how you take in a place, well... Normally, one of the first th one of the first things I look for is an altar, and I point that out. Put it down. I said when I come in, I said, and I look around. I said one of the first things I saw. I said I was happy to see it, and pointed out. I, said, I pointed toward the altar and said, "It's this right here." I said the altar. I said because they're taking it out in most of these churches. Most churches don't have an altar at all. Now I know you don't need a bench up there, a wooden bench, didn't call an altar, but it says something. It makes a statement. 
a bad statement when you go into church and you don't see that up there. It's like, well, we're taking the altar of repentance out of God's house, and we're not preaching the the blood, not the repentance of sin, the the salvation by grace through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and in Him only do we have the salvation and this repentance. No, we're in the, we're in the falling away. We're seeing people getting out of the true will of God and going into these. My goodness, these uh, materialistic and prosperity gospel mega churches, you know, there's none of this is mentioned, you know, it's just all one big concert and not, you know, no, nothing about the Lord is mentioned. Uh, you know, you, you might hear God, you know, a hundred times, you might hear the word God a hundred times, but never, never hear the word Jesus mentioned at all. Well, you know what? It said even the devils believe that there's a God and they tremble but you got to understand too the Bible even says though there be gods many a lower G gods our God Jehovah God has the upper G God the true and living God now we know there are imposters there's fallen angels as I said there's demonic spirits that masquerade that transform themselves as Satan does into angels or beings of light and try to gain people and trick people and you know and a lot of people are falling for it are falling for the deception deception is here but there is a great deception that is coming along with it very soon it's already starting to take root and rise up now the B system is rising The enemy is doing everything he can to fight against the church. He tries to, you know what the problem is? We let him in. Yeah, it's unfortunate. We and we need to repent and turn back to the pure, undefiled, preach it without fear, without favor, the word of God. Walk circumspectly in God's house. Walk that straight line. Be respectful of God's house. And don't let the enemy come in. Don't don't let the enemy own your shoulder and walk in with him. Like I said, if he tries to sneak in through the door, kick him right back out. But some have let him through the door and he slithered through all the you know the benches and everything, and then made his way up behind the pulpit, and he's got the church at that point. These things ought not be. You know, you people in the church. You spiritual warriors, you adult Christians that's on the meat of the gospel, and that's no longer a babe in Christ, on the sincere milk of the word, as God says. You need to be on the watch out for that. This, If you let this happen, it's going to be on your watch. Pastors, you preachers out there that do this and don't watch for this, and don't preach or teach about the spiritual warfare and how to be prepared for it, it's all on you. God's you're the head over that flock. You're to watch for the wolf coming in in sheep clothing. Okay? I'm not con not condemning any of you as saying, you know, that you know, just you know, you're just a bunch of <laughs> of whatever low I'm not gonna say, you know, I'm just saying through God's word, we need to be the men and women that God wants us to be. To be mighty in his word. To be mighty in the spirit. To know how to defeat the enemy. And fight against the enemy. Because as I said. One of these days. The restrainer is going to be taken out. A lot of people believe that we're going to be taken up. Before the restrainer is taken away. And the flood of darkness is going to engulf this planet. But you know it says. After the tribulation. And. While I, you know, and I'm not, I don't get in, like I said, don't get into the, the whole deal about the timing of the rapture. I know we're going to get pulled away. The Bible says it, dead in Christ your eyes first, and we that remain alive and remain are going to be called up to meet the Lord in the air. I get to understand that. It's just a matter of when, the timing, okay? I know we're not going to see the wrath of God. He didn't call us to wrath. 
because we're saved. We're filled with the Holy Ghost. We've accepted the Lord Jesus as our Savior. So whenever he decides to take us up or take us out of here, it may be as individuals. Like I said, you know, may I, some of you we may, may go before you get pulled out or before that time. Hey, whatever Lord Lord's will is, we have to accept it. Well, no, I don't, I don't want to go that way. Well, it's not in your hands. <laughs> Oh, there's some stuff that's in your hand and if you live a good holy life before God uprightly before God and let me give the disclaimer again before anybody gets all up in arms I know we're not going to be 100% perfect in this flesh during this lifetime but God's word said to strive for the perfecting of the saints if he didn't want us to do that he would not have put that in there okay he wants us to walk uprightly before him in this present, this evil fallen world. Be lights shining on a hill. Be a beacon for people to see and say, be curious about what that is. And you shine your light for it. And you unleash the gospel of Christ upon them all. Hey, I'd love to unleash the gospel of Christ on the United Nations, on the Vatican. What? Man, you talking about that? Yes. No, I mean to shoot, shoot you guys now, but you know the whole deal about you having to go t through a man, uh, or have, you know, uh, people going to a middle ground called purgatory. I hate to say this, but you know, guys, that's uh, not biblical. That's not in the Texas Receptus, which is what we have, which is what it was called the the received text, the true text of God. I won't go any further talking about that because I don't want to shut anybody away. I want people to know the truth. If you're in something and you know it to be false, you need to point it out. You need to take a stand. You need to quit bowing down to the will of the people. Because a lot of times the will of the people is for a person to craft up and make up a idol god. Does that sound familiar? Aaron? <laughs> and Israel uh, Moses has been gone this long so he must have he, he's not coming back so you need to build us a God Aaron don't bend to the will of the people now I know you've got especially if you're a pastor you deal with a lot of things I know I understand that I know our pastor does as well I, you know you, you probably your phone never stops ringing But there are ways to deal with things that's it. and not bend to the will of the people. You try to please as far as you're able to and to work with people. But when it comes to God's word, that's where you got to draw the line. That's where the friendship right there stops. And the, pa the minister or the pastor and the flock, that's where that starts right there if you understand what I'm saying that's where the preaching comes in and you hear and obey the word of God not because it's so and so not some, not because this person preaches it or I preach it or anyone else you believe it because it be the word of God and also as a warning too you preachers, you teachers when you say thus saith the word of God it better be you better better be able to prove it by God's word. Okay, uh, you, uh, that's a serious thing. You can talk about stuff that you know that. Uh, for, oh, let's use a quick let's use a quick example. A lot of these denominations. All right, saying right now, and I know I I hit I probably. I hammer on this hard a lot of times. Now, I know we're taking a minute, and who knows, maybe the Lord wants us to go in a different direction by talking about this, but, you know, maybe this might then this lesson might be for another day. But anyway, moving on with what the thought we're putting ahead, we're talking about. The denominations have accepted sodomy. Now, I know in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, sodomy and all kinds of the fornication and all that junk 
is forbidden. It was an abomination before God. So why are these denominations, why are these churches that profess that they're Christians saying, come on in, it's okay if you want to do that. So it's okay if you two men want to come in and uh, become members and uh, will marry you or you two women or something like that. How can you justify that? It's not in God's word. So you totally went out of God's word right there. And actually, in a lot of ways, you need an open rebuke for doing that. Well, we'll get people in, and we'll, you know, maybe they'll do. It. No, no, they're going to. They're going to. They're, what they're going to do is, is they're what they're trying to do right now is bring this to all the churches. That way, they can get all the churches in trouble and get them lawsuit. Thankfully, right now, as long as it is in your bylaws that you will not condone sodomy and marry two men or two women as long as it is in your bylaws you are still protected as of right now who knows when <laughs> that might change but yes some sometimes an open <laughs> an open rebuke needs to be done is it pleasant no it never is but God's word needs to stand above all and before all of us. We need to line up with it. We don't need to make it line up with what we want to do. And that's what a lot of these people are doing. That's what a lot of these preachers and pastors are doing. That's what a lot of these church members are doing. They are tailoring it and curving it, taking stuff out, putting stuff in to suit what they want and their lifestyles or wants. And I've said this, how many times have I said this? What does it say at the back of the book of Revelation? The revelation of Jesus, of Jesus Christ. It said if you add to the words of this prophecy, you add to the word of God, the plagues that are written in it are going to be added unto you. If you take away from the word of God, take away the words and the prophecy and all the stuff included, you take away from it. Your name is going to be taken out of the book of life. Amen. That's what it says. Well, that's possible. My my uh, my preacher told me that I that you know I was going to uh, save and I I could do what I wanted to and I'd still be saved and I can I can still go to the bar and I can still have a good time and you know not worry about it and just party and you know at the very end I, the, you know Lord's going I'm going to go to heaven. Well, guess what? <laughs> that so-called preacher lied to you. Because that doctrine is not in God's word. When we can become, when we get to the knowledge of the truth, we're begotten by the word, we come to the Lord in faith, in repentance, and as to be saved, we are to get out of the sinning business. No excuses. Now, I know when you're young in the faith, there's a lot of things and a lot of learning that goes with it. I understand that. I get that. But that's the part. Don't stay at that level. You will never grow. You'll never bear fruit. You'll never be able to work the works that God wants you to work when you become, when you come to the knowledge of the truth. So, grow, study His Word, pray, seek His will. And most of all, even with me, don't take my word for it. When I say something, look it up yourself. Do your own research. Just don't take my word for it. Now, I would never, I no, never knowingly try to deceive anyone or say something that's not in God's word. I read it directly from there and whatever I feel the Lord moving through me to say. Through my heart saying, you know, this is, you know, this is what I want you to say, what I want you to talk about. That's what we're supposed to do. But I know he's not going to condone any sin. Okay? There's no sin that's going to enter heaven. Okay? God's word says that. No sin's going to enter all the stuff and in and, and different in different books and, and the Bible different, you know, often it gives it gives lists of stuff of different kinds of sins. And even one point I guess I've hit on this before, but it always amazes me when it says that it says 
uh, gives a whole list of sins. And at one point it says, inventors of evil things, or something of that nature, but it does say inventors of evil things. All the other stuff and sins that it listed and listed else wasn't enough. We got to invent new ways to sin against God. Lord help us. But you know, that's the flesh. And as I said, I know we'll never be perfect in this flesh. But when the Lord saves us, we continue to grow. That spirit comes out and through this flesh and this flesh will start bearing good fruit. And as I said, if he didn't want us to walk in his will and try to strive for the perfecting of the saints, to walk in his will, to do what he would have us to do, to bear good fruit, then he wouldn't have put all that in there and more. But you notice he put a warning in there, like I said in the book of Revelations, and that, that should put to silence all the ones, all the people out there saying that no matter what you do, that you, you won't lose your salvation. Well, let me tell you, you need to go into the book of Revelation and read what it says when it says that your name will be taken out of the book of life. What's the book of life? The Lamb's book of life. That's when you get saved. That's where your name goes, right? Uh, this is not popular preaching. By no means, because people don't want to hear it. People, people, people want to hear that you can slack and you can do what you want, where you want, whenever you want, and you're still going to make heaven your home. Paul even preaching that there's no hell anymore. That the devil, oh, he's just a, just a just a a projection of the evil side of mankind, the flesh. He's not real, so we don't worry about it. So just enjoy it, have fun, you know, uh, you know. Uh, and they mention you know God a hundred times, but you know the name of Jesus is never mentioned. People, the church world <laughs> is in pitiful shape these days. Because we let everything but the word of God come in God's house. Whew, man. God only knows why. <laughs> hey, you know, I don't know and people, if they listen to this, they're probably sitting there gritting their teeth and grinding their hands, just mad at me by saying some of this stuff. But hey, I got to tell you what God's word said. You can't go on sinning. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. That's what it says. Well, brother, you're just being too strict. You know, you think you, you sin more or less every day, even in your mind. Well, you know, it even says bringing every thought and every imagination of the captivity of Christ. Wow. So you're just saying you're perfect. Nobody says no. <laughs> I still need a lot of work. We all need a lot of work. That's why it says strive for the perfecting of the saints. He wants us to strive, to push, to run that race, not stop midway and never, never reach the finish line. I know this is some serious, some strong preaching, but you know what? We need it. We need this strong preaching. We need a strong doctrine because we've let the loose and everything else doctrine come in the church house except the one that needs to be in there, the Word of God. We even got stuff claiming to be the Word of God that is missing passages, that has different words, that has verses taken out, verses put in, to the point, it, it's no wonder, it is no wonder people are so confused about God's true will and what he wants from us. Listen, we have the received text just because it's in old English language. Get a dictionary down. <laughs> get get a strong concordance. Get a good Bible. Hey, I can personally recommend, and one that I use is my main Bible. That I use take and I preach from is the Dakes, D A K E S, Dakes annotated King James Study Bible. One of the best ones around. It has Greek and Hebrew, tells about the words that's in there. 
gives commentary about what and you know and you got to be careful you got to watch the commentary but I found that for the most part the commentary when I'm studying it lines up with it very well but you there's some that and they're there again some of these newer Bibles you got to be careful about commentary because it's just that man's commentary what does it say? What does it say? Does the, the, does the commentary actually just say, no, this doesn't really mean that. It really means this. You see how sly, how, how, how that gets pushed in there? And people say, oh, well, yeah, I can see that. People, don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. God is not mocked. We need to, as I said, I think, consider it. We need to show more respect in God's house. We need to quit the foolish jesting the stuff that goes on hey I love having a good time I love having a good laugh uh, you know <laughs> uh, you know just just in, in, in everyday life something happens you know that I find hilarious and I'll laugh till um, my head's about to explode and I'm sick in my stomach I've laughed so hard you know I love having a good time there's a time and place for all things and let me tell you something a lot of this junk going on in God's house is not in place it's out of place we come to God's house yeah of course we, it's an easy environment and you know, brothers and sisters in Christ and everything like that but you know when it comes time for the service for w the Word of God to be preached and taught we need to show reverence for the Word of God we show reverence toward that pastor not saying bow before the pastor and true pastor and a, and a, a shepherd of the sheep will say that as well no you don't bow to me because I'm just a shepherd I'm, I'm a servant like you as well you bow to the chief shepherd which is the Lord Jesus amen <laughs> we not even got the word yet but hey this is good I'll make a little confession here earlier on I did about 20-25 minutes of a video struggled through it and it was like I thought well that was what the Lord wanted. Me not being perfect now. <laughs> thought, well, you know, I thought that's the way, or that's the way I, want, I thought I wanted to go and thought, you know, I need to go this way. Well, some of it just didn't work out and all the distractions come around and I guess what, I just, I, I said, you know, I think this is it. I shut the video down and got rid of it. I said, now Lord, what do you want me to do? And I went to the book of Second Timothy, and that message still may have to simmer for a little while before it totally comes out. But right now, I think it's more important to hear about what we've been talking about, about the rod of correction. And like I said, a lot of times it is not pleasant. Uh, well, all the time, really. It's not pleasant. And it takes no pleasure in having to do that. You know, you adults in Christ... And, I'm, and I'm a lot of time, and let's not go by, let's not go by age, I mean actual age as, you know, teenager versus someone 30, 40, 50 years old. Let's do it as we're talking about either a babe in Christ that might be 50 years old versus a an adult in Christ that's on the me of the gospel that may be 20 years old. Well, you should respect your elders. I agree, absolutely. But when it comes to God's word, you can be a teacher. You can walk uprightly and show these people what it is to serve God. At one point, don't know if we're getting to it, but even at one point, Paul even told Timothy, he said, don't let anyone despise your age. Let no man despise your age. Who knows how old he was. I'd like to do a study. I keep saying I'm going to do a study on that and look for it. But it must have been a young man in the gospel and in the faith. Paul one point even called him, you know, a son in uh, in the in the faith. So, word to you is, you young people out there. For one thing, praise the Lord that you're a young person that and that and that you're serving God, that you're truly serving God. You're not going to these big mega churches. That's a big rock concert. You know, people say, well, you got to change with the times and draw people in. But yeah, but. Where is the Word of God at when it comes to that? Where is the grace, the salvation, the blood sacrifice, 
the name of Jesus mentioned, where is it in some of that stuff? If it's not in that, what is it for? What good is it doing? Well, it's bringing people out of the environment and they can be around this and everything like that. Okay, granted. Maybe if you get started that way and go that way, get people in, to draw people in, that's wonderful. What's one way to get, if, if, you, if, if the Lord places it on someone's heart to have a certain type of ministry, maybe that's even uncommon or never even heard of. Well, this is a new thing. In God's Word, it talks about, was it in the book of Isaiah, preached on uh, Sunday morning in one passage, how about, behold, I will do a new thing. So, it may be something that you never, well, how in the world? But, there's going to be earmarks, so to speak, with the gospel. It's going to line up with the gospel. And, grace through faith, the word, the name of Jesus mentioned, the blood sacrifice, the blood atonement, the repentance of sins, all that we need to be included in that, okay? That's your gospel. You know, it said, you know, you say, you say the word God a, a hundred times and, you know, is it, you know, even the dead, see, even the demons and the devil, those are the God and they tremble. But you know, <laughs> as I said, you know, there, there's there's plenty of false gods that's operating in this world. What, what are we talking about? You guys heard me talk about this before. In fact, what, what I say earlier, stuff's running together. So because all this stuff just coming in, wanting to come out. <laughs> you know, I know there's false gods. There's fallen angels, demonic spirits that pose as these gods, these other gods of other nations just the same way they did in the Old Testament you know we had all the false gods back in those days you know Shemosh, Baal, Molech, uh, Tammuz, uh, there's probably two or three others I'm missing and even Paul mentions it in the New Testament to the Gentiles they worship what they worship in idols what they're actually worshiping behind the idol is a demonic spirit something evil it's still doing the same today doing it by different means you know if you find out one way how the enemy is working and you call him out on it guess what he's going to do he's going to try the next thing he can think of to be sly and work it out so it's a constant spiritual warfare you need to learn spiritual warfare that that should be among your basic training as it were excuse me been doing a lot of talking need something to drink there spiritual warfare 101 that should be part of your basic training once you get born again you start walking in God's will so well, why 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 the why the urgency because the spiritual warfare is getting thicker and thicker in these last days it's ramping up the enemy is ramping up the forces of darkness And at one point, like I said, when the, 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 the restrainer is taken out of here, there will be a flood of darkness upon this planet like never seen before. That, that, that happened, uh, not, you know, that, that was probably like after, after the flood, when, or, or uh, when the Tower of Babel was being created. I won't go into that all right now, but, you know, there's stuff, other stuff about that that can be taught along with that. but we have to know how to battle. If you don't, you end up, now there's one point. Well, if everybody wants to do that. Know your Bible knows the story about the seven sons of one Sceva, or Siva, however you want to pronounce it. Seeing, you know, the disciples of the Lord casting out demons, you know, and they, one person they encountered said, you know, we adjure you by the name of Jesus whom Paul preacheth to come out of this man. And what did that demonic spirit said? 
What, what, what did that demonic spirit say to them? Said so Jesus, I know. Amen. <laughs> Paul, I know. <laughs> yeah. But who are you? Did not recognize him. Didn't recognize their power. Because why? Because they had no power. And guess what happened to them? They left running down the road, beaten up, at the very least. People say naked and screaming and running down the road and everything like that, but at the very least, they leave, they they left beat up. It was the spirit. It said the spirit leaped on them <laughs> and sent him running. So yes, you need to know spiritual warfare. You need to be versed in it. If you're, let me tell you something. If your pastor just is. is, is does not want to preach at, is scared to death of, don't want to have nothing to do, don't, you know, don't want to preach out of the book of Revelation or teach you spiritual warfare, then you need to have a talk with him and find out why. Not that you're trying to be above him or anything, but you need to know why because this is stuff that you need to know in these last days. We have to war against the enemy same way he wore like I said earlier like David he run he ran out he didn't he didn't slowly inch like out of fear oh 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 I don't know what's gonna happen he didn't do that to Goliath what did he do he put the stone in the sling and ran toward that giant and took him down and then chopped his head off with the with the giant's own sword That's exactly exactly what you and I need to do that's the attitude and that's the power that we should exhibit not our own power no power of God within us the power of the Holy Ghost within us now I think it's even Sarah you know and along with uh, the, the Great Commission so he can say that which is lost unleash the gospel of Christ upon this dark evil fallen worldly system shine the light of the gospel but in tandem and by doing this by doing that by getting people saved it says also well, the son of man was manifested to destroy the works of the devil so you see how those two work in tandem with each other together you get people saved then you're destroying the works of the enemy you're pulling somebody away from the fire that they're eventually going to experience if they don't come to the knowledge of the truth and gain salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. What the Lord said. He is the door to the sheepfold. He is the chief shepherd. And we have to come humbly before him. I pray that anybody in the sound of voice on the other side of the screen whoever watches this video whenever it, that you feel the pull of the Holy Ghost the Lord tugging at your heart so strong that you can no longer resist it that you have to go down on your knees in repentance to God not just to beat you down or anything like that. no that's not my point I want to see you saved I want to see as many as Lord willing can still come into the kingdom of God and gain salvation before it's ever lasted too late. Because hey, this dispensation of grace that we're under is not going to last forever. There's going to be a time when the Lord calls an end to it. And He gave us signs as we talked about. I talked about this. I talked about this many times. He told us the things to be looking for when the birth pains started. You know, and we're seeing and we've been through, going through the birth pains. He said, but the end is not yet but it's getting close but he said when the gospel must be published must be preached must be taught shown to all nations all men and everything then the end shall come well guess what <laughs> as I've said it satellite internet because of all the technology that we have and the satellite internet that we can send across the world places that you would not even believe even in the jungle through satellite internet People are going to be watching a video, a preacher, a teacher, or something, and get saved that way. So, how long 
before the end's going to come. God only knows. The Lord Jesus said that he didn't even know. He said, only my Father knows. But you know what? Regardless, and actually right now, we need to be ready. Because you and I are not guaranteed, I think I said earlier, you and I are not guaranteed five more minutes of life upon this planet. It might be our time to go. Might have a heart attack. Might pull out of our driveway and get hit by a semi. Who knows? Life is so uncertain. Death is sure. Oh, I'd much rather be called up and taken up by the Lord when he comes back. No doubt whatsoever. Don't have to don't, don't have to experience the part about death. But you know what? If you do, you'll know where you're going. As long as you bow and you gain forgiveness for your sins and you accept the Lord Jesus as your Savior, as your, you know, the propitiation for your sins, the substitutionary death. He hung on that cross for you, for I. That way we wouldn't have to. He did it willingly. And, and I think I've done one video about and even talked about the the pain and torture that crucifixion what it does to the body the pain and torture that you go through and I won't go through all of it right now but there was a study like I said that the I don't know how far back it was but believe it or not well it's been several years quite a few years there's a study believe it or not done by of all places the Mayo Clinic about what crucifixion did to the body the pain that you would experience if you went through actual crucifixion and it was horrendous it was horrible a horrible and a shameful way to die but the Lord did it not for himself but, but for us I don't know anybody that would well, you know, the, uh, you might okay. You might have if you, if you're if you're a parent, you might give your life for your child. But that's just going to be giving your life for your child down here. It's it's it, it's as far as salvation goes, only one man that hung on the cross nearly two thousand years ago that can guarantee you that if you come to that altar of repentance, that you can trust that he died for you, and you repent and you turn to him and ask him for forgiveness and to save you out of the sins of this world this dark evil this worldly system that we're under the prince of the power of the air the prince of this world the deal was sealed at Calvary the deal was sealed at Calvary the Lord took the keys away from the devil amen but the deal hasn't been totally sealed yet to fruition to the end because he, right now he's still able to fight and at one point going to bring the armies of the world together and at one point talks about in revelations about the spirit like like frogs that come out of the mouth of the antichrist the beast of all you know the false prophet to bring the kings of the earth and all the rulers and everything together for that great battle that's coming <laughs> but guess what they are going to lose big time no doubt about it because God's word says so and I and I hope you do the same thing put my faith in the word of God I put my faith in the Lord Jesus Christ that he died for me put my faith in God knowing that he sent his son to die for me and that he's anointing me with the Holy Ghost preach the gospel without fear without favor preach it teach it sometimes strong sometimes with a rod sometimes gently people respond differently to different ways but when it comes down to it the Lord knows what he's doing look we've barely even touched even the Bible today and I'm not bragging about that you know we've mentioned scriptures and everything but there again this must have been the message that the Lord wanted to put forth this one this other one will be for another time <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. I've had a per per preacher say it some time. And it's happened to me. You get up there behind the pulpit, one message that you have that you study, 
and all of a sudden the Lord says, No, go over here. This is what this is what's needed tonight. And you're like, Lord help. But you do it and he blesses. And I feel like he's blessed this time of us together right now. I think his word's been put forth and the warning has been put forth against the enemy. And as I said, why, if, if not, why? Because you need it. Why are you not being taught spiritual warfare? Why are you not being taught out of certain books in the Bible, like Revelation? Our preachers even say it. No, I don't teach out of the book of Revelation because it's too hard to understand. God can give you the wisdom and knowledge you need. Why is, why is the book in there if you don't need it? Why was the book given any of it in there if we didn't need it if we didn't need to study it a lot of times it's just an excuse in the flesh I'm not down anybody I don't want people to think that I'm just hateful toward anybody but when it comes to God's word I get serious like I said because we need to show reverence to, to the Lord when his word is being taught and preached now sometimes we have fun on here something you know and a smile and laugh or something like that out of something out of God's word just because it's out of a happiness knowing knowing that you're saved that you're born again that you don't have to dread the fires of hell and then eventually the lake of fire where all of darkness and evil eventually and all nations and all people that free God are going to be cast into <laughs> in life and be happy and my heart be lifted up knowing knowing that the Lord is blessing although we may have problems may we have warfare we have to fight in this flesh and, and war and you know deal with this flesh on a daily basis the Lord gives us power we're to keep on the whole armor of God at all times we're to determine daily that we're going to die to this flesh and walk in the spirit that way we won't fulfill the lust of the flesh, as God's word said. Be infectious. Be that light shining. Spread the word out. If nothing else, sometimes you don't even have to say a word. It's the way you walk and carry yourself. People say something is different about that person. Something's different about that guy. Something's different about that girl. You know, what is it you find out? They're a Christian. They're Christ-like. And they are actually Christian and Christ-like. And they're not just in name. You know, sometimes I think, at one, and at one point it was, you know, when especially when, remember the WWJD bracelets and necklaces and all that come out, that it was in vogue for a while to say I was a Christian. But a lot of that was just in name only. When the trials and the troubles get hard, guess what? They turn against God. They run away from him. When, you, when the trials and tribulations get hard and things get hard and life becomes hard and a fight and a spiritual warfare, why are you running away from God? Or you run to him for the strength and the power you need to get through it. And he will bring you through it. How do you know? How do I know? Because he he's brought me through things. I can tell you my personal experience how he's brought me through things and he'll do the same for you I've heard testimony after testimony can't probably number how much that the Lord has blessed somebody brought them out I'm going to give this one thing here and we're going to close here in a minute talking about what we're just talking about how the Lord will bring you out if you run to him and don't run away from him at the New Fellowship Church that we preached at this past Sunday, the woman who gave a testimony said that she'd had eight strokes, severe, and lost mobility each time in her arm, her legs, and you know, we tell you something. A lot of people that they have one stroke. A lot of times, that's it. This woman has had eight strokes 
and she's still up and walking around and still being blessed of God see that's my God that's the God I serve the other gods won't do that they give you just enough to keep you hooked in you know just like you know you fish and you like that jerking it just a little bit like that and putting some movement to it that way that fish will get the attention that's the way the enemy does and when you get online he just slowly reels you in keeps you in eight strokes this woman is walking around still giving glory to God still in God's house what's our excuse now what's our excuse if you're young and able to be in God's house why are you not in God's house as I've said many times if you're elderly if you're sickly I understand and God understands you know you still got your Bible if you've got internet you've got means to watch teachers and preachers so God knows about that and God understands that but like I said I don't believe God understands it when you are healthy and in good health instead of going to God's house you're doing everything but on the time that the church door is open on Sundays or Saturdays whatever you want whatever you want to have it anyway don't want to go uh, much more into that because like I said <clears throat> excuse me don't want people to think that you're just being malicious and I don't want anybody, anyone to believe that to think that about me that I'm just being malicious and hard nosed toward people no I'm trying to get people back to the word of God to the holiness and the, the strict and holy walk that we're supposed to walk according to God's will what he wants us to walk I'm not saying we can't have fun like I said I have, I have a lot of fun just doing whatever I, you know it doesn't matter but the fun that you can have it doesn't have to be sinful you know sin's only fun and enjoyable for a season but guess what when it brings forth everything that it brings forth and it's done what's it going to bring the Bible says death you still have fun you still enjoy this life still enjoy this creation I do this a lot but I'm looking outside and the leaves are, are turning more and more and the sun's out blue sky hallelujah beautiful day the Lord has given us let's rejoice and be glad in it amen Amen. I hope something has been said to lift you up. Didn't mean to bring anyone down, but I'm like I said, this is what the Lord wanted. <laughs> Lord had changed. Change, she changed the message. He's done that before, homie. That's fine. I just want to. I'm, I'm glad that I obeyed the Lord because I feel that I've delivered my soul. Now, it's the message and the stuff that taught. It's in your hands now to do with do with whatever you you're a free moral agent let me encourage you though if you're not saved seek the Lord repent from your sins and be saved before it's everlasting too late if you've turned your back on the Lord turn back to him and that way you can pull yourself or have some help be pulled away from the fire that you're heading to if you're sick pray for healing no doubt the Lord said you can pray for anything so it doesn't mean he's going to give you just anything that you want because especially if it's something that's going to take you away from him he's not going to bless you with something like that he comes first before all things he's not your co-pilot he's the pilot he's not first in your life he's not in your life at all he's to be first number one put him first because the Lord Jesus put you first instead of his life did he not Amen. We love y'all. Pray for us. We'll pray for you. Pray for our churches. We'll pray for your churches. Come visit the Word of Life if you get the chance to. Uh, as I said, don't skip your church. You know, you've got if you've got work to do there, Lord wants you there. That's what we want. As I've said many times, it's not about with us putting a number on a board. It's about seeing souls saved. But we'd love to worship 
with our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ that go and have other fellowship and other churches. So come visit if you're able to. Uh, but uh, just remember that you that you have work elsewhere as well if the Lord's called you to do something. So don't neglect the work that the Lord's called you to. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank the Lord most of all for his salvation, number one. And, uh, you know, uh, still continue to pray. I know Halloween was last night. I know that was the big ritual night. But this week, there's still going to be a couple of nights. I think maybe one next week. I'm not, I just have to look, make sure I'm looking the, the, uh, and they and believe it or not, they actually put out a, a calendar, a satanic, a ritualistic calendar. They don't care to put it out there. They don't care to throw it out. Say, hey, this is what we do. But they're going to have more rituals. So, spiritual warfare warriors that listen, continue to pray. Don't stop praying just because Samhain or Halloween was last night. Continue to pray through the rest of this week and next week against the dark powers and dark rituals that are going to be performed. God bless each and every one of you, and uh, blessings in Christ upon each and every one of you, and we'll, uh, we'll see you in the next video. Take care now. Bye.